So we're ready to assemble the uh, undercarriage, which would be the leg stretchers, and put them in the seat. So the stretchers, stretcher tenons, have been in the kiln at about 140 degrees for 48 hours or so, so they're super dry. And uh, then the leg tenons have been sticking down in here, and they're super dry, but the mortises have stayed at uh, uh, probably around the EMC, so 12 to 15 percent, maybe something like that. Uh, it's drizzling today, and so I, you know, it kind of warm, so the humidity's up a little bit. I'd, I'd really need to move pretty fast on this, or those tenons will swell with me, but uh, typically if I'm by myself just doing it in here, I'll run about, uh, they won't be out of the kiln for more than an hour or so, but uh, if, if I find that I'm running too long, I'll stick them back in the kiln. And in the winter time with the stove going, I'll have to worry about that. They, you know, it's dry in here and the tenons can stay out. So anyway, enough of that. <clears throat> open it up. So right there's my uh, stretchers. Uh, you see I wrapped aluminum foil around the, uh, around where the mortise is going to go in the side stretchers to keep them from drying. Uh, although they probably wouldn't dry deep down in there, but just precaution. Um, Set those on the on the bench and get the uh, get the legs out. Hey, right, so I got my legs uh, numbered here, and I'll stick them back in their in their holes so we can get the angles angles off of them. And then the stretchers, what I've done with them is turned them, obviously, but I've oversized, I've left the tenon oversized. So how big oversized? Well, you just need to do some tests, but I mean, I really don't want to talk in thousands, but, uh, but typically I'll... I'll run the tenon about 650 thousandths uh, uh, while it's, uh, uh, when I first turn it, and that would be at EMC, which say would be a 12 to, you know, 12%, 15%, something like that. I'll turn these at 650 thousandths. Wrap it loom full, stick it in the kiln for 48 hours. It'll super dry down. I don't know how much. It depends on where it came out of the tree. Maybe uh, it, might, it might shrink as much as, uh, as twenty thousandths, uh, something like that. Uh, <clears throat> so then I'll uh, put it back on the lathe, which I'll I'll show you in just a second, and I will size it exactly uh, for the for the mortise. And I've got a hole over here, a test hole that I've drilled, and so I'll size that, check it, and then I'll turn turn the rest of them. So that's what I'm going to do with the stretchers in a minute. Uh, the uh, the glue. The glue. I use uh, hot hide glue. You can use any glue that works. Uh, I just like I just like this stuff. Uh, you know, I like it because I get it in a big bag and it lasts for about four years uh, like that. I don't have these little bottles I gotta get rid of. I also like it because I have complete control over it. I know it's fresh. I can make it fresh every time I get ready to uh, to uh, make a chair. Uh, so what you do is, uh, I add a little bit of urea to it to slow it down because high glue tacks so fast you never get the chair together. So I go ahead and melt the urea. I use not quite 20% uh, uh, weight of uh, urea to glue in the, in the joint. And I go ahead and mix up my urea water because the urea uh, melts better with hot water. And so I just keep it in the cabinet over there and whenever I'm ready for this undercarriage I just take one tablespoon of glue and I'm using a 192 uh, gram strength there's a lot of different gram strengths and 192 is what I use here put it in the jar uh, one tablespoon couple of tablespoons of water which is going to be 20% urea and uh, then I let it uh, uh, absorb the water while it's cold and when that's done I stick it in my glue pot Pull my glue pot over here so you can <clears throat> you can see it. I got one of those fancy glue pots that costs a lot of money, uh, but you don't need that. Uh, I think Pete Galbert's got a good alternative on his blog, so you can look and see. But probably a crock pot would do. I used to use crock pot, and one time it, my glue fell over and got all 
water in it and I went out and bought one of these after that happened. So uh, uh, anyway, so when I'm ready, I'll stick the glue inside the hot water and melt it down and I'll be ready to go with that. Hide glue, there's, you know, there's other advantages to it. You can, you can reactivate it, you can take the joint apart. Uh, you can size the joint with it uh, to get a good, uh, uh, a good glue joint with end grain. So there, there's a whole lot of reasons why you would use it other than our cool factor, you know, which is reason enough, probably. <clears throat> okay, so I'll set this stuff back over here. And uh, so I think I'm ready to size the tenons. Alright, so uh, got the center stretcher in right here. Uh, I turn them to size with this turning caliper here that I've had for, for a long time. Uh, some people use a wrench that's been filed down or, or other gizmos. There's like, and you're probably tired of hearing me say this, but there's a thousand one ways of doing this and all of them fine, just do it right. So this is just the way that I, that I do it right here. So, uh, uh, okay. Um, Got a little bit of a shoulder there, I don't want that. I like it all to be pals look like look like it grew out of it. Center allows me to pull it in and out like I'm doing. It's got a spring-loaded point on it. You see, I've lightly chamfered the edge here for it to for it to enter. Some people don't even like to put that much of a chamfer on it. They just uh, turn it square and then rub it on a piece of hard maple to chamfer it. Uh, I've got a lock right here. This is where the mortise fibers will push into the to the tenon lock. Um, there's a lot of chair makers that that. Uh, don't like to use that and it's six of one half dozen of another there's reasons for using it reasons not I, I go ahead and use it and uh, then I've got I can see where my line is right there and this is only an inch long my mortise is an inch and an eighth so the the uh, stretcher in back of the raw tenon 
will be housed completely inside that mortise so you won't see any raw tenon. Um, if you have a shoulder then you end up with a kind of a small little triangle on the chair of a raw tenon. Uh, that doesn't hurt anything, it's just I decided to get rid of that so that's the way I do it. Okay, let's go back over the chair.